Hi, I'm Marius from MWS Photography here in Cape Town, South Africa. And in this video, we are going to have a look at the brand new Flash Q Q20 Flash from Lightpix Labs. Now, I did not buy this Flash. This was sent to me by Lightpix Labs to do a honest review for them. So I'm not being paid for the review. They just sent it to me and I can honestly tell you guys what I think about it. Okay, so I'm using a Fuji X-T1 and previously they did send the wireless triggers um, that I've been using on this camera. It's so small, it's basically the same as this. When I take this little thing off, this is what I used to have. And what I like about it is this is so nice and small. It comes in a little carry bag, so here's the filters as well. It fits into this and it takes two AA batteries, which is a little bit of a pity. I know it's a good thing it makes it lighter, but it's always a pain to charge two batteries. I prefer to charge them in set, charge them in sets of four, but you can't have everything, can you? Okay, so it comes in this very nice little bag and I can carry this in my pocket. It's that small. So it really accompanies my Fuji X-T1 really well, because sometimes I want to go places where I want to take the camera as small as possible. Then usually I will take my battery grip off as well. Then this camera is super small. So I take this in my camera bag and a few batteries and now I can just grab this flash, put it in my pocket or in my camera bag and I've got a off camera flash, everything all in one like this. So I've got larger flashes for my Nikon system as well as my Fuji system. I've got the Fuji EFX 500, the brand new flash from Fuji, but that thing is huge. And if you put it on here on the camera and you don't have the battery grip on here, I can't properly use that, that, that flash. It just it's front heavy it makes the entire camera want to go forward so that flash is really heavy wow. now i know that is on camera and this flash can also be used on camera i just want to put this thing back because i almost use it most of the time with this because i've got larger hands it's just much easier okay so i'm not i'm not really going to use it on camera like this because this doesn't have ttl it's only got the normal one firing pin in the middle that's just going to say flash fire fire but you can use it on the camera and then you use the manual power levels on here and the next video i'll be showing you how it all works but basically if i turn it on like that you should see the lights welcome you there it's almost like it's saying hello okay so there's the flash power and there i can set the flash power so then you do it manually i can control the flash powers and i do have the ability to tilt the flash which is really nice and you can tilt it all the way from 45 i think to 90 degrees if i remember correctly yes 45 to 90 degrees so this gives me the ability to have a bounce flash in a really small package because all the smaller flashes like this i've previously seen seen didn't have this you always had to have it in this position which looks really ugly i i don't ever shoot a flash like that okay so what i like about this is the small size factor I can really take this in my pocket wherever I go and it can be an on-camera flash if I do need it. It's got a guide number of 20 which is more than strong enough. I'm shooting high eyes on this camera a lot of the times anyway so if I'll be using this maybe in a, in a venue or somewhere where I just need a little bit of full light if it's going to be bounced most probably on this guide number of 20 will still be sufficient. I can shoot half power full power and still get a ton of light with the guide number of 20 so that really doesn't bother me. I know I have to be realistic with what they can do in such a small size and what they've done, they've really done well. The flash is nice and sturdy. All the buttons on the back, if you press it, you can feel the buttons are strong. It doesn't feel cheaply made. Um, the layout at the back of the flash, as I'll explain to you in the next video, once you understand the, 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 what all the buttons here do, it's really straightforward. And it, I really love the way that you just press a button and it ejects the trigger from the flash. Now it might look ugly if you look at it like this because it's got the square shape but okay for Fuji it has actually complemented because it looks actually very nice on there but when you take the bottom transmitter part out because it's square you can put it down in any you can have it down like that in a room in a corner and you can bounce it like that against the wall and get a nice large bounce of light back from a wall you can maybe put it on a book stand somewhere at the top, shoot it up, get all the light coming down. So you can put it down in any way you see fit. So I do like the shape of it. It makes it easy to control it whichever way you want to go. Now it's also got their normal 
quarter inch tripod mount so you can put it on any tripod or light stand you can just you'll see in in, the, in video two and three what when i've mounted it there so it's really easy to use it to set it up the functions on the camera are really easy um, there's not really that much i can fault on it specifically like i said it fills a gap that previously i was struggling with a bit is taking a heavy flash with me when i'm out just shooting and this most probably i won't use this on a wedding um, i need something that's really strong and potent and just keeps firing at full speed the recycle time on this well i haven't used in the wedding i might end up doing it i don't know but the recycle time on here is about six seven seconds at full power so it does take a little bit of time to recycle properly um, so that's a little bit of a bummer if i'm going to use it for like a paid shoot or something but i'll might end up using this even if i'm doing a shoot like that and i've got time um, now i can see this actually working in shoots where i did corporate portraits and stuff where having this small thing in a corner would give me exactly the same result as what i had shooting at a lower power level on my Nikon SB 910s with my Cactus version 4s which is a great way to shoot I've got different groups everything on there but it's very bulky and very heavy I'm basically carrying an entire set of, uh, of, of kit with me just to do that this is super small and I can get sort of the same result with this um, one drawback and I will explain la later in the videos as well um, is that because like i said now with the cactus version 4 it's another system that i've got um, i think i've got videos on youtube for that as well there's newer versions of that out as well or well, sorry not the cactus version 4s the version 6s sorry big mistake there here's the version 4s whoopsie i've got tons and tons of version 4s here's the version 4s i use these on my studio lights that's here behind me um, but sorry the version 6s not the version 4s okay my version 4s that i've got Version 6s, what's wrong? Now, maybe I need to grab one of those castle lights, beers that I'll have in the third video. <laughs> it maybe will wake me up and then I'll say the correct things. Okay, so the version 6s, they've got all the different um, groups on there. Something that's a little bit lacking on this, because now if you want to set different power level on a different flash, you can't do it just by using one of these um, transmitters, because you've got a button. On the transmitter if you take it off like this you've got a, a power down power up so you can change the power levels of the flash but if you sync both of these flashes where is the other one in the back if you set both of these flashes up to the trigger and i'll show you that in the next video you'll see that when you change the power levels on one on, on the unit it'll change on both flashes so you can't have two different power levels you can't shoot quarter power that way and half power that way what you can do is you can turn the one to slave to the slave function the optical slave it's built in there's an optical slave right there on the front there's also a video light there so you can turn the optical slave on then you change the power level on the one this can change the power level but then you'll have to manually change the power level on the second flash and then use the synchronization or you can what i'll do later on in third video you'll see i'll be using one of these to change the power level on the on the second flash and then the other one will be on my camera here so that you can do um, so it's not a big deal. It's got to work around um, and Considering this, this, this the, the size of this I really don't mind like I said it uses two batteries there. You can see the batteries go in there. I Hate charging two batteries at this at, at, at separately It always feels like I'm messing up the batteries a lot quicker if I'm not charging them all four at the same time uh, So it's a little bit of a pet peeve for me, but again wait two batteries extra will make this thing a lot heavier and I can carry that in my pockets. So I'll, I'll sacrifice that. Okay, I've got the technical specs here. So I'll just go through a few of them and add it in there. Okay, I already said the guide number was 20. It's got the LED video light on here, which also works as a modeling light, which is also very nice. Lot, not a lot of flashes have got a modeling light on there. So this can also give you the similar feel as a studio light. So you can turn... If you turn it on like that here's the flash turned on now i can turn the modeling light on i'll show you in the next video how i do that and then you'll see there we go there's the video light turned on and then when i press the button here to test it you will see it will flash the modeling light turns off and goes back on again so it's very similar to shooting on your studio lights where you've got the modeling light light on the 
the, f the camera flashes, the modeling light turns off and turns back on again so you can see exactly where the light's falling. So with the modeling light on, you won't really see the effect here now, but if you're taking a picture and you want to see where your shadows will be or um, get an idea for what your lighting will look like, a little sneak peek, the modeling light is handy for that. Now I haven't used it yet, but I can see that work um, if you're doing a little light setup with an umbrella and everything. Um, you can also control, if I turn it back on, you can also control the power of the video light. Not sure if that's going to pick up on the video, but that is, just want to see how, okay, there we go. So there we've got a stronger video modeling light, and there we've got a dimmer one. So you can also control that. If you're shooting for an umbrella, I'm guessing if you turn it up a little bit um, brighter, you should be able to get the light going through the umbrella to give you an idea as to what your shot will look like. So I can see that working. Okay, what else have we got here? Um, the flash trigger itself has got a 10 meters wireless operating range. I haven't tested it yet. Not sure exactly if we can maybe go a little bit over that. I've had triggers where it says 100 and I got 130 out of it. So I'm guessing that's going to depend on is your battery in there still 100% okay? It might change if you don't, if you have interference somewhere. It might make it less so but 10 meters is more than enough for a type of uh, for a type of shot that you want to do it's also got very interesting yeah. thing um, that I'm glad yeah. in here and that's the the this um, ah, the word the optical slave I said it earlier it's got an optical slave that's in there right there but you can turn it to fire on the first flash or the second flash, which is really handy. So if you're using manual or TTL, you can choose to fire in manual the first flash or TTL the second flash. So that's very nice. If you want to add this on to something that you're already doing, you might be shooting with other speed lights. You just want to add this because you got it. Just put it in there, put this, the, 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 the slave option on, choose your flash power and you've got a third flash or fourth flash that you can add into a shot. Um, recycle time, I tested that. It's around seven seconds on alkaline batteries and around about six seconds on rechargeables. And that's what I got. So that's pretty much what it says here. Number of flashes, haven't tested that. 100 to 2000 flashes by fresh alkaline batteries, won't know. LED video lighting, according to them, will be able to run at full power for around about an hour. Uh, okay, the rest is not really that important. Weight wise, without batteries, this is about 115 grams. Like I said, really tiny or or light but tiny if you look at my hand i can basically put it inside my hand like that okay so honestly what i think about them very nice flashes they will be be a very nice addition to my kit i can carry them in my pocket take it with me wherever i need to go if i have a need for flash i can quickly get it out i can go off camera immediately change power levels have a modeling light in there so much flexibility from such a small flash and i do enjoy where did i put them now uh, i actually should have another one yet here's another one this one i haven't even opened yet so this one should actually be better okay so i do enjoy the little gels that they give you with them you just need to remove the little protective layers that's on top of it i think i removed this one and then you just open it up like that flash tilt it open like that and then you just slip it in there there you go so normally if i wanted to have a colored gel and i love to use gels i would have to put a velcro strap around my around my flash and then I would have to grip it onto the Velcro to have this type of effect. So again, almost nothing extra I need to carry with me. So I'll say well done Lightpix Labs on this flash. And again, thanks for adding it to my kit. So that's that. And in the next video, I will show you guys how to use these flashes, what all the buttons and the lights mean. And in the third video, I'm going to use it practically by doing a little shoot to show you how the gels work and everything I'm going to do a setup. So see you in the next video. Bye.